Welcome, Fight fans, to Big Fight Preview as we are just minutes away from an another exciting live fight card Wednesday night fights here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. We're going to start with a couple of welterweights and then the main event at 175 light heavyweights. It's Kelvin Davis starting it off at welterweight, the younger brother of Keyshawn taking on Mario Lozano, and then Luke Santa Maria against a good one. This should be a good fight at welterweight as well between the Puerto Rican Nicolas Flas and the main event at 175, Radovoy Kalajic going up against the Cuban, Sullivan Barrera. What a fight that is going to be. And of course, Pro Box TV, good fighters and great fights. Wednesday night fights is going to be fantastic. George Dimitellis alongside the, the usual suspects. I saw that movie recently, so I had to mention that. We got George Jakovic, Chris Algieri, Pauli Malinaji. Gentlemen, I'm looking forward to what's going to go down at the Pro Box Event Center live in Plant City, Florida. George, it's Wednesday. It's my favorite night. It's Pro Box TV. It's another great card. You got veterans who have fought for belts, unbeaten fighters, and guys with losses still looking to move their way up the boxing ladder. But Chris, let's start with Calvin Davis. He's fighting Mario Lozano. Uh, Davis is the older brother of Keyshawn Davis. And Calvin fought his last fight on Pro Box TV. So uh, give us a little rundown on, on Davis and what he's like as a fighter, what he needs to work on. And this is actually his fourth appearance here on Pro Box TV. You know, he's had three step-up fights over here. His last fight, he fought a very tough Clarence Booth. Uh, was Went the distance an eight-rounder and I think got a lot of really useful experience in that fight. Uh, he's one of those guys, man. He, like you said, you, you, he's he's the brother of, of Keyshawn, who's obviously a, a budding star. But Kelvin's one of those guys who's going to be, you know, work, kind of working in the shadows, working his way up. And Pro Box TV is a great fit for him for him to get the much needed experience that he's going to need in the pro ranks. Super tall, long, he's got good power, good ability. Um, he went, like I said, he went the distance last time, so he's showing a good gas tank as well. So uh, a lot, lot of upside for for Calvin Davis. But like I said, a little bit different than his brother, working his way up in a, in a different route. Um, but Pro Box TV is, uh, is is basically becoming a second home for him. Yeah, Paulie, and you can't forget, he's got Ball Mac in his corner too, so. Yeah, yeah, that and 275 will get him on the bus, guys. I was not impressed with uh, with Kelvin Davis uh, last time out. Clarence Booth gave him more than more than his money's worth. Uh, I felt like if Clarence Booth was cutting off the ring, he would have won even more rounds and would have probably been able to win that decision. Um, he may have gotten a little wider on the card on the cards than it was, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember now, uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, I felt Booth gave him a way a, a way tougher fight than he should have. I think you know Booth is always a durable guy. He's a guy who comes to fight. He's a guy who puts a who, who fights tough, and he's sort of that that journeyman level guy who is kind of a. a of a step up in some ways for some prospects where, you know, if you want to get to that next level, you're going to have to take on a guy like Booth and, and see how you, how you match up. Uh, the champ, Chris made a good point. Uh, Davis showed a gas tank there, but at the same time, he didn't show any consistency in my, for my liking, as far as being able to control a guy like Booth. It, it was, they were fighting Booth's fight. And, and in terms of the pace they wanted to go at, they both kept going at at Davis. Like I said, if Booth would have just cut off the ring, he would have had probably had more success. So I think Davis is going to have to show in this fight a little bit more, uh, control of the ring a little bit more ability to show that he's not just a talented guy but he's a talented guy who knows how to mentally assert himself in the fight with his boxing style and not be forced to fight the boxing style of the opponent in order to win the fight because eventually that catches up to you and, that, and it will create losses um i think there's a reason for that because of that fight he's kind of stepping down in competition right now uh but uh we'll see how he looks we'll see how he looks i i think uh being in the shadows of his brother is almost an understatement at this point, because if he does, if he, if he doesn't show that he can perform to a level uh, that he needs to, he's going to stay in the shadows of his brother, maybe even, and, and that'll maybe be the, the ceiling. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how he makes these adjustments in this fight. Again, it's, it's a step down from his last fight, but nonetheless, uh, there's things you can look for in, uh, uh, in, in Kelvin Davis. And of course, having Bo Mack in the corner is always a talking point. But like I said, that 275 will get him on the bus. Actually, in New York, they might be $3 now on the bus. So I was going to say, it might, it might be more, more expensive expensive than 275 at this point so yeah, yeah. So, so you know so 275 won't even get him on the bus he's gonna need more than just uh the talking points he's gonna have to show it in the ring and uh i, I look forward to seeing what he can do well chris before we move on uh paulie talked about what calvin has to do to improve uh what about you what do you see that he needs to work work on to get to that next level 
I'm less critical because I've actually shared the ring with Clarence Booth. I think that was a really big step up for him in terms of uh, his step up in class from where he was coming from. You know, it's, it's a damn near 30 fight veteran that he was stepping in with and a guy who's physically strong. He's, he, he can punch. He's been in with all with really good competition. Um, so yeah, he, he definitely he struggled in the fight, but you know, th like, like the champ said, this is a bit of a step back down. I think they got a little too ahead of themselves with the Clarence Booth, Booth fight, but listen, he got away with a win. A lot of guys have fights like that earlier in their career. Um, but exactly what Paulie said, he's got to assert himself. He's six foot one fighting at 140 yeah. pounds. I mean, you don't often see that. I was tall for 140. I'm five foot 10, five foot 11 on my best day. Six one is very tall. He's got a long reach. Plus he's a southpaw. So being able to be tricky, long, and use that distance is going to be really important for him. Um, and he, I think we saw some 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 issues with some physically strong guys who are going to push the way that Clarence Booth did his last fight. So being able to assert himself, find that range, uh, maintain that distance, but also deliver his own power to get respect is going to be really important for him moving forward if he's going to go up in the ranks dealing with some of these guys moving forward. Who he has in front of him ten, uh, tonight, I, I'm not as worried about as it was, you know, like he was in his last fight with a tough Clarence Booth. Um, but we'll see. I'm sure they went back to the drawing board. Those guys never stay out of the gym. They're always working with Bomac, and the gym is full of full of full of lions and tigers. So uh, I'm sure that they've been working on some good things. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Well, before we move on to the co-main, I, I should have asked Chris: Have you sparred with anyone else on this card? Because you've sparred with any, any everyone. Well, I've I've actually been in the corner with uh, the 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 one of the fighters in the main, main event, Sullivan Barrera. He lived with me in my condo for three right. months uh, while we were preparing for the Dimitri Bivol fight. Um, never sparred Sullivan. He's a, he's a big dude. Fights a one-night light heavyweight. Uh, is there anyone else on the card that I spar? I don't think so, no. Okay. No. Well, I just well, I want to get, because you, you've you sparred, if people don't know, you've sparred with almost, almost everyone out there. But we're talking the co-main, Luke Santa Maria against Nicholas Flaws. It's a 10-round welterweight fight. Uh, Paulie, Santa Maria is, he's only 26. He's 14 and 3. But he's been in the ring with some good fighters. He fought Devin Alexander, although he was at the end of his career. He fought Jesus Ramos. The, the, this kid has got some experience. Yeah, yeah, and Santa Maria has some good wins on record too. He's done, he's done pretty well uh, for himself. Uh, he's, he's, and I think I believe his only losses. I'm checking now. I think his only losses are to undefeated guys, right? I mean, he's, he's only, and, and he's got a, he's got at least one win over an undefeated guy. So he's been in tough. He's performed well. Um, he's even beaten some pretty good fighters. And um, you know what? He's, 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 he's done. He's got the win over Alexander. But again, it was a late career Alexander. But he also has a win over Michael Fox. You know, Michael Fox is not an easy mm -hmm. guy to look good against either. You know, so this is a kid who actually can fight again we don't we may not bring you the pro box the championship level fighters but the guys just below the championship level fighters that we bring here at pro box are not pretenders like when you see a record like this as 14 and 3 like oh he's got a few losses he's not just a run of the mill 14 and 3 guy we're gonna bring you a guy who is 14 and 3 but his foot has been put through the grinder here and and, and, he, and he's fought a very tough schedule and he's earned that 14 and 3 record so he's very dangerous to maybe a prospect who might be undefeated like santa maria has been santa maria has some losses to undefeated guys but he got at least one win over undefeated guys and like i said he's beaten guys like michael fox and devin alexander so it's a it, it, it's a fun fighter to watch because he's going to be still be hungry. He still believes in himself. And uh, an opportunity on Pro Box is all a guy like this can ask for. Because you got to win over over a guy on Pro Box. You do it once. You do it twice. You're going to find yourself in a big fight with a guy who's actually in his prime and not maybe a faded guy like Devin Alexander. Champ, he also beat a uh, Abel Ramos, who's a tough yeah. out for anyone. He, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. he, had a, he had an absolute war. He's been in, man. Yeah, he's been in, he's he's been been in tough. real tough. Uh, Abel Ramos had, a, had an absolute war with uh, Ivan Baranchek a bunch of years ago. Um, he holds a win over Omar Figueroa Jr. Yeah, it's not, it's very, very tough guy. So, yeah, yeah, to your point, I mean, Santa Maria is one of those guys. Normally, we see Santa Maria fighting some undefeated guy, and you're like, oh, you know, they, they should beat this guy. And then they're in the fight of their life because that's the kind of guy that Santa Maria is. And he can knock off any one of these guys at any any given night because he really can fight. Um, but tonight, he, he's in with, with, with somebody different, another guy who's used to upsetting the apple cart. He's coming off two big wins, and that's Nicholas Flaws. He has a win over Sabayo and Jahai Tucker, two New York guys that, Paulie, yeah. I'm sure you know Sabayo very well. I know yeah. Jahai Tucker. I, 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 I knew so a very good fighter. Very good yeah. fighter. And so was Jahai and, Tucker. And, so for and, him, mm -hmm. and, and Sabayo had some good wins over guys himself. You look at Sabayo's record. He knocked off some undefeated Russians and all that stuff. And yeah. then he comes in. And you look at Sabayo's record. It's almost funny. He's looking, He's kind of on a roll. And then all of a sudden, he runs into this guy, and he randomly loses. <laughs> a guy who's nine and two, and then you're like, where, where did this guy come from? And he, then, he, then he knocks off another undefeated guy in Jahai Tucker on an undercard of top rank. 
and you're like, man, where's this kid's resurgence coming from? So we got we got a fight of two guys who are who are kind of in the similar stages in terms of where they where they lie uh, in their careers for for for, for boxing. And uh, listen, that's what Pro Box TV is all about. Two guys that are probably probably never see each other anywhere else are going to yeah. go and put on a great show, I'm sure. And that's yeah, a great point, perfect Jim. Pro guys would not see each other anywhere else because a lot of times guys like this get used as opponents. They don't get yes. to fight each other, you know, yeah. in terms of being on their way up. And this is the beauty of Pro Box. You know, we don't care about A-sides, B-side opponents or, or A-sides. We just want to get good guys against each other that match up well. This is a sneak good fight right here. Sneak sleep. And, and Paulie, you're right. Santa Maria has only lost to unbeaten fighters. But George D. Metellus, we had a chance to talk to Santa Maria. So why don't you uh, tee it up? Yeah, Luke, Santa Maria joining us. And speaking about the fight here on Pro Box TV, don't forget to leave your comments as well. We're a few minutes away from the start of a great card of Wednesday night fights. Let's hear from Luke Santa Maria ahead of his big fight against Nicolas Flas. Yeah, you know, I've always just wanted to jump right into it. I, I didn't really want to... Uh take the easy route or well, how, I mean, I started that way, but after I came to the United States, I told my coach and my dad, I said, I want to fight the best, the best fighters I could fight. Cause there's, I mean, there's no faster way to the top. Right. So that's why, that's why the resume looks like that. You know what? It's, it's, it's helped me in the way that uh, it gives me a lot of confidence, like beating uh, Alexander, beating Ramos, you know, gave me, gave me a lot of confidence that I could be in the ring with, with, with anybody, you know? Oh, I, I, I could do a little bit of everything, man. I could bang, I could box, you know. You won't, sometimes you won't even be able to cat, you won't even be able to hit me. So, so you know, I could do a little bit of everything. I um, mean, we know he's a tough fighter. We know he's he's gonna come and fight, you know. And yeah, I mean, he's not he's not coming to take a loss. So, so it's gonna be a great fight. I mean, I, I learned I learned a lot, you know. I learned uh, things that I. I, I, I should have worked on, you know, like for example, when I fought Ramos, I, sh I should have, la I should have threw more, you know, I know he was a bigger person, but I should have threw more. I should have been more accurate with my punches, just, you know, stuff like that. Oh, I want to be world champion, man. I want to be world champion 147 and, you know, 154, even 160, man, because I like to eat a lot. <laughs> I mean, not a two mile horn, but my fights are always uh, exciting. You know, I always give the fans great fights. You know, um, I'm crafty. You, know, it's, it's, you don't want to. You don't want to blink because it's 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 always a you know, a good a, a good a good a good fight. I'm gonna win because it's uh, it's something you know that I train for. Something that it's gonna push me to my to the next level. You know, and it's a win is all I I, I need a win right now because it's just it's important for my career. Thank you. Luke Santa Maria ahead of the co-main event against Nick Laus. Flas. By the way, if you're wondering that first name, his father, he has a great interview on ProBox TV in Espanol. His father gave him that name after the great golfer, Jack Nicholas. So that's how he gets that first name, Nicolas Flaus. That should be a great one, co-main event. Luke Santa Maria looking to put on fireworks. And as we do at ProBox TV, good fighters and great fights. It's coming up in a few minutes' time here on the Your Boxing Channel. All right, George, let's get into the main event because that one is going to be fun at 175 between Hot Rod Kalajic and the Cuban Sullivan Barrera. Man, I mean, you know, there's so much to talk about with these guys. Chris, they're, they're both uh, light heavyweights. They both fought for belts. Barrera's 40, 42, so he's on the back end of his career. Hot Rod's 32. But let, let's just t talk about the fact that these guys have both fought for titles, and Hot Rod, with a couple of wins, could be right back in the mix. Yeah, I mean, these guys, you got to, this is, this is another one of those kind of fights. You got to look past the records. You got to look at where their losses came in. They, these guys have only lost to excellent fighters. Sullivan Barrera fought Andre Ward. He fought, he fought Dimitri Bivol. He fought uh, Zerto Ramirez. He, he, he fought, he, you know, his other losses to Jesse Hart. He has a win over undefeated Shabransky. He beat Joe Smith before Joe Smith was a world champion. Mm -hmm. You know, so that kind of, that kind of pedigree. And, and also he's also a, an amateur world champion from, you know, fighting out from Cuba um fantastically skilled guy i've actually called him one of the best fighters to never win a world title in recent years because he is that talented and yes he's absolutely in the twilight of his career he, like you said i think you said he's 42 or 43 42. years old yeah 42 years old um and has been inactive as of recently but man he's got all that experience to fall back on which makes him a dangerous foe and and to your point about hot rod hot rod is is looking to get back to that title contention he fought better be up we've got this narrative now where one's fought bivol one's fought better be up both have losses to these guys. They were both 
they were guys. So it's like we got the kind of like the, the next step in in uh, in the weight class with these two fighting each other here. It's gonna happen. I mean, it, it, it's one of those crossroads type fights. It has the, the it has the ability to be to be an awesome fight going back and forth. I know these guys have shared the ring together, sparring partners. We're both from down here in South Florida. Uh, tough one for me. I'm 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 friendly with both these guys. I've spent a lot of time around Sullivan. So uh, both good dudes, but when it comes to fight night, I mean they're they're gonna throw down. This is this is for both of them. This is one of those last chance opportunities. Yeah, there's some talking points, you know. The, these guys have sort of been right there in a very very difficult weight class at the top. Anyway, you yeah. know what I'm saying? From the very top, better be even people are, are two of the best champions in the entire sport. So these guys have been, you know, the the difference with this fight and the co-main event is these guys have fought the top guys while they were top guys. You know, while while in the co-main event. They fought some top guys before they got up there or after they got up there, you know. So they would. They, that's what makes those guys interesting, nonetheless, because the level of competition is still there. But this fight, these guys are more recognizable, and that's why they're the main event. You know, Kalajdzic has been in with uh, 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 Marcus Brown, uh, Artur Berbiev, uh, Sullivan Barrera. Uh, Champ Chris was just talking about his, his excellent resume as well. So the the question here is, these guys have enough left. Can they? Can one make an impression against the other to still? be able to be discussed among the top light heavyweights in the world because they have been among the top light heavyweights in the world they just came up short in a weight class that maybe if it didn't have, have such, such excellent champions would have probably become world champions and sometimes that happens to guys i've seen several guys over the course of my lifetime that i feel would have become world champions if their weight class wasn't so tough and i think that at the very top of this weight class guys like kalazic and, and sullivan barrera are world championship material or at least have been where the question we're trying to find out on wednesday night fights is if if one of them still might be a raise or if they're both past it or if one is past it and i think that they could have at least won a major world title in a, in a bit of a weaker weight class. But in a weight class where at the top is ruled by a, a monsters like Artur Bitterbiev and Dmitry Bivol, they've come up short. So you try to hang around. You try to see what you can do. You try to see if you can get another shot at one of those guys. Or you try to see if maybe those guys leave the weight class or, or in, in Bitterbiev's case, maybe retires or whatnot. And you try to hang around long enough among the top to maybe get yourself another title shot. Well, one, where one way or the other, you might be able to win. And we'll see. We'll see if they're too long in the tooth or if they're still at the top. They have been great fighters. We're going to find out what they got left. Champ, it's, yeah. it's so interesting, your point, saying that, you know, how, do either one of these guys have enough left? They're 10 years apart. We, yeah. you know, mm. Sullivan's 42 and yeah. Kalajic is, is, is 32, but we're still questioning how much do they have left. That, and that's just that's just boxing, man. There is no boxing math. There is no age is but a number. For, a lot of times with boxing, yeah, absolutely has an effect. But some guys have have a lot more in their tank late late in life than others do. So it's just another interesting aspect to to the sport. We got two guys who are ten years apart, and we're still questioning: Can they get back to where they were? Because they have been there. They've been to the highest level. You talk about being world champions in another weight class. I think either one of them would have been a world champion in a weaker weight class at any point. And like I said, Sullivan beat Joe Smith. Joe Smith was a was a legitimate world champion in this weight class. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of times uh, not not so much the luck of the draw, but timing is everything. Um, not only just in the ring, but also with everything that plays around it in the business itself. Yeah, and Kalajic yeah, had a, a, a controversial decision loss to Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown, yeah. Himself yep. was a, a top of the heavyweight contender who wound up getting a top himself. Uh, and, and real quick, Chris, uh, Hot Rod fought for a belt, but he's not ranked in the top 10 right now. He's 32 years old, so obviously this win wouldn't vault him in a title contention, but he's got to he's got to work on this. Um but we did talk to Hot Rod, George, so um, why don't you tee that up for us? Yeah, let's hear from Radovoy Kalajic ahead of that fight, the, the main event here on Pro Box TV against Sullivan Barrera. Here's what he had to say. The excitement of a fight at the Pro Box Arena is probably one of the best uh, venues out there, because, especially from, um, from a fan's point of view. You see, any, There's no bad seats. Every seat, you can see everything uh, with the lighting, with the closed seats, and just... Um, I don't know, it just feels like home, which kind of it is close to St. Pete. So it's just, it's just a great venue for fans and for fighters to showcase their skills. Yeah, Sullivan Barrera, I knew him from uh, from Miami when I used to live in Miami. I believe we sparred one time, but it was such a long time ago. Um, I can't really recall how the sparring went. But he's just an overall good fighter, uh, has a lot of experience, 300 amateur fights, uh, a lot of Pro fights, fought one of the top, the top guys at the lot of division. So, so this is going to be a good fight to showcase my skills and see where I'm at. I, if, if I want to move forward, I need to get past him. Uh, it drives me uh, a lot because I know that better be than Bivol are fighting in June 1st. And um, 
the winner, I believe, either one, which whoever wins is going to eventually vacate. And hopefully not, but if they do vacate, uh, the titles are going to spread out, and then I'm going to have a, even a better opportunity to fight for any of the belts. But if they don't, hopefully I get the rematch with better be or, or a fight with Bivol in the future. But first thing is I got to get past Barrera to even think about that. Just uh, what they should ex- expect is a, a boxer, a boxer slash counterpuncher with devastating power to, to to wait on your mistakes and counter you, or just uh, come forward and attack and get the job done. But a spectacular fight, regardless. I feel like I'm just a better boxer overall, even though he has more experience. I just feel like I'm a better boxer, faster, stronger, and uh, yeah, just better overall. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we like to hear from boxers here on Pro Box TV on Wednesday night fights. A spectacular fight. Kalajic and Barreda, their their form coming into this fight is different. Kalajic four straight victories coming into this one, three straight by knockout, technical knockout, and Sullivan Barreda have lost has lost three of his last four. So George, it's going to be interesting to get the opinions of Pauly and Chris in terms of the keys to victory for each of these fighters. Yeah, Paulie Hot Rod, uh, he mentioned fighting at Pro Box. His last fight was at Pro Box, so he knows the arena. Obviously, Sullivan Barrera, he's he's fought champions, so the arena won't intimidate him. But Paul Hot Rod, um, what does he have to do to win this fight? It's kind of odd because he's fighting a guy who hasn't fought in two and a half years, so you don't know exactly what Barrera has left. Yeah, but Kalajic himself hasn't really sparkled as far as his schedule is concerned either right i mean that's a reason why he's not ranked himself so he's got to come in and try to uh try to basically impose his youth and impose a pace on sullivan uh hot rod can make things uncomfortable for you he can be a bit awkward at times uh i'd say you know try to get into the not so much into the head of the older guy because the older it's hard to get into the head of an older guy as an older guy kind of has seen everything but make it a make it uncomfortable for him and there's various ways you can make it uncomfortable for an older guy um in, in terms of pace in terms of keeping him overthinking in terms of just making him feel that heat uh because as we get older we have less and less of a desire to be in that super super tough fight while we're young when we're young we, we kind of rise to the occasion of being in a super tough fight you know we we kind of relish it and look forward to it Sullivan obviously still fighting for a reason he feels like a a, a, a key win like the win right here will put him in a big position but maybe make him feel what it's like you know remind him what it's like because at, at 42 years old uh Sullivan Barrera who hasn't been active and like George said uh lost three of his last four granted to he's fought some pretty good opposition but nonetheless Kalajic is also a good opposition yeah Chris uh so your your keys for Barrera you you you've been around Barrera but again two and a half years is a long time out of the ring and he's 42 years old so there's no doubt he's got a ton of experience but you know father time doesn't usually lose yeah, I mean, two and a half years is one thing. Two and a half years off, I've come back from two and a half year layoffs, but never after the age of 40. So now we got two and a half years after the age of 40 for Sullivan Barrera. And there's going to be a big question mark here. How much does he have left? How much is he willing to dig deep? The, exactly like, like Paulie said, the champ. Um, but with Sullivan, at his best, he's, he's physically strong. He's a, good, he's a good solid puncher for the weight class. He's world class in terms of his, his durability and his power. But he's very crafty. That I don't expect to go anywhere. And I think his craftiness, his ability to set punches up to and to lay traps is really going to be the difference if, if he's going to be successful tonight. And for him, the keys to victory is to get respect early. If he can land a good shot early on and get the, get, get the respect of Kalajic right away and then turn it into a trench fight where they're, where they're going to be setting traps back and forth and he's able to slow that pace just enough that he can fight a 40-year-old pace rather than a 30-year-old pace where Sullivan Barrera can can excel and potentially get the win tonight. Yeah, he's just got to craft. He's got to set traps, and he's got to use that experience that he has uh, younger and surging uh, Hot Rod. So Hot Rod's last last fight was uh, last September. It was on Pro Box TV. He knocked out Mickey Ellison. Um, Paulie, what, what did you see? What did you take from that fight? You know what? It was, it, it, it was an opportunity to show a bit more. You know, I felt like Hot Rod needed to kind of push the envelope a little bit more in that fight. You know, if you're going to show uh, that you can comp- you're going to be still be relevant as Hotline Rod has been relevant in a weight class that is ruled by but guys like Bitter BM and Bibble, you need to sort of go that extra step when you're performing and and try to be that much more impressive, you know? 
Getting a win, obviously, is excellent. You know, you you want to still keep your perch, keep your perch among the 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 high higher ranked names in the weight class, even if he's not in the rankings. Kal- uh, Kalajic, Hot Rod is a guy who's recognized as a as a dangerous guy in the light heavyweight division. Regardless, his reputation is kind of set. He's fought for a world title. Like I said, people remember the Marcus Brown fight. But I, again, against a guy like Ellison, again, who's crafty and and, and all has is a savvy guy himself. You need to sort of have have pushed the envelope a little bit better, in my opinion. Kalajic. Now has another opportunity. The win gets him another opportunity. But are you going to impress enough to make people curious? Because remember, people right now are super curious about people and better be if they're fighting each other. Finally, they have it. But what yeah. happens after better be and people fight each other? You know, there's the weight class once away and keeps moving. You know, I've complained in the past about a weight class, weight class where the top guys don't want to fight each other and they sort of create a log jam down, down, down the, the the top ten, top fifteen of the weight class. It, Weight class they're fighting each other, so this weight class is gonna move. So you gotta position yourself so that after better be even people fight, you can position yourself somewhere in there and possibly be considered. Yeah, that that Chris. last fight for me with Hot Rod, it seemed to me like he was just he was holding on to the position. He he he. It was one of those win tonight, look good next time. And this is his opportunity. He has a, he has someone in front of him. Even though he's been out of the ring, he's got a, he's got a great pedigree and he's been in with some of these top guys. If he can be dominant and win in a spectacular fashion tonight. People are going to be excited once again. I don't think anybody's excited off of off of the Ellis win, but if he gets a big win here, especially if he does it in an in in impressive fashion, people will be excited. This should be a great one. This should be a great main event. But you guys got to get out of here. We got yeah. fights to call. <laughs> Minutes from now, George, let's let Chris and Paulie go and get ready. I go get the tie. On. Yes, I agree with you, George, for sure. Yeah, you got to see Paulie and Chris change and get ready. Look smooth alongside Mike Goldberg for Wednesday Night Fights. Don't forget, if you want to make a little extra coin, sportsbetting.ag, the official online spot betting sponsor of Wednesday Night Fights here on Pro Box TV. Like and subscribe. And during the fights, the chat sometimes is just as entertaining as the fights there. So keep it going with the comments on our YouTube channel. And don't forget, Wednesday Night Fights starts right now.